Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and the painting I am bringing you a demonstration of today is called Stream Through the Field, and it's a 5x10. Uh, quite similar to a painting uh, we put up, uh, I don't know, probably a month or so ago. And, uh, you know, river cutting through a field, and uh, this panoramic format will tend to lend some kind of uh, similarities to things as well. But the uh, story sort of behind this is that uh, I had this bit of reference for a long time, and I made a painting from it, uh, which I won't share with you because I think I painted over the top of it back in... 2011 or 12, something like that, and it was a real struggle painting. It was really, I kind of liked it. I had so much time invested in it that it took me a while to really, I, I, there were th problems actually built into the reference that um, for all of its good points, um, I couldn't, couldn't find my way out of those problems, and I think one of the things I did was try and solve it was cut cut the painting into a square or maybe even painted it in a square format. Either way, I felt I solved all those problems. I took this bit of reference on again as a challenge and um, you know, while not being maybe the greatest work I've ever done, it's it's certainly a nice little painting. I'm happy to present it to you today. And uh, speaking of this uh, channel and presenting things to you, we're going to be coming up to the like, share, comment, uh, scrolly thing in one second I can see it in my video program so be forewarned and well that happens just to avoid the shock <clears throat> why don't you go ahead and click that like button and help us all out and uh, yeah I'll just keep bringing you painting demonstrations now I did do some photography this evening and uh, one of them is one of, one of these um, Island Girls is what I'm calling this series, and uh, I'm probably going to throw it up in the channel just to see what happens. I don't know, because I know I could ask you guys, and 10 of you would be good enough to <laughs> answer the poll. Maybe 20. I don't know. It's, it's certainly, I know you are one of the good ones. So the other guys, the other subscribers that are lax, you know. Anyway, I'm not going to bother with any of that because it doesn't usually pan out. But uh, what I'm thinking of doing is just, uh, what, what do they say, uh, run it up the flagpole and see if anyone salutes. If we see a lot of views and uh, positive comments, um, then I'll continue to post that sort of material on this channel. I will probably have to mark it as adults only so if any of you guys are children watching you yeah, might be out of luck but uh, just to uh, cover my uh, rear end with old YouTube I mean it's totally tasteful classic art approach but um, anyway stay tuned for that I now have a few things that I can put up to kind of show you the direction I've been going um, <clears throat> and, and the landscape actually, all done in sepia tones and there's quite a few I've been looking at uh, wanting to do some some of the very limited palette of uh, burnt umber my new favorite color, ivory black uh, lead white uh, yellow ochre that would be the whole palette and um, I've been we're doing the figures with that, and you can do 90% of, 100% uh, of anything you need to do with, for a figure, pretty much with that palette, I would think. Maybe you'd want a rosier red, you know, but uh, <coughs> those colors work great for almost everything. I'm just, I don't know, I'm very focused on, uh, you know, I've been doing tons of color uh, for a long time, so I kind of, <coughs> pardon me. I just got a bit of a whatever in my throat there. Um, <coughs> sorry about that. I apologize. 
anyway, I've been playing with that, and so I want to do some little landscapes that way too. Um, I'm reminded of um, good old Dennis Sheehan, who has, a, by the way, um, promote him a little bit. He has a uh, nifty little s s series of, of painting uh, tutorials that are on uh, Vimeo. You have to pay, but um, it gives a decent uh, bit of instruction and insight, and certainly is a really good painter and um, one of the modern guys that is carrying the tonalist flag, and he does a great job of it. And uh, back in 2011, he had a uh, website where he had some videos, and I was um, fortunate enough to watch some of those and get a few pointers off the man, and I uh, always appreciate that and be grateful for that. As a matter of fact, I'm thinking of him because um, I tried to integrate some of his tips and pointers into the original version I did of this scene. Uh, yeah, that painting didn't work out, but that's okay. That's, I guess, another thing. We're halfway through the video. Um, and I realized, actually, I've been watching this Draw Mix Paint guy. It's great. Highly recommend his channel. Some of you commented that uh, you follow him. Maybe you, why wouldn't you? I mean, tons of great information on painting and from a guy who's actually taking the time to teach, which is admirable. I don't really teach that much here. I tend to, um, well, my approach is more philosophical and based on insights, and we've talked about that. And it's all good, because we've got uh, wonderful people like Draw Mix Paint to get you into some nuts and bolts stuff. But I myself, I have a little different, um, well, just a way different personality, different approach. And uh, that's said, I'm always happy to answer questions. and. Uh, and uh, there are no shortage of philosophical insights in a painting, which this is one I wanted to share with you today. We got about another half of the video to go, another six, seven minutes. I think I can get this done there. I was talking with a a gal who was a friend of mine, family friend, and uh, an artist who wants to get better, wants to have mastery, has some time to get better, and uh, what, but has a child as well, and that's a something she has to deal with but uh, I told her I said listen the only way to get mastery is by doing a lot of work and you can't have an attitude that um, oh interruptions will throw you off your course you can only work when it's quiet or you can only work when you have your favorite program on in the background or you can any of these sorts of things that might stop you from working those are just ideas they are not valid ideas either. They're just ideas you believe you subscribe to. But if it's not serving your working practice, then um, I say lose them. Now, in any given day, everybody's different. But even, uh, I mean, some artists could maybe paint for a solid eight hours. I tend to get on a very highly productive day, maybe four to five hours maximum. Usually it's more like two or three hours and then there's a lot of other support work that goes on. And uh, But if I'm doing two or three hours a day that's adding up to a lot of paintings especially if you work in a you know fairly quick manner. Um, and you know for what it's worth I know I've achieved some level of mastery with my work. I'm not I'm not putting myself up with the greatest that I've ever been, but I know what I'm doing, I know what I'm about, and um, we'll see if that holds up for these uh, figurative things I'm doing. I have a lot less experience painting that sort of thing, but uh, anyway, I digress. Um, the point I'm trying to make is that if you want to get mastery at your art, you have to put the time in and you can't make excuses for why you can't put the time in and so you can either have a goal of getting better uh, at painting and, and working towards mastery or you can just say well I really don't care about mastery and I don't care if I get that much better I'm just gonna fart around now and again and now most people don't say the second thing but it happens is they'll set a goal and maybe they 
they get into it and maybe they don't but a lot of times there's a lot of ways people go wrong and um, so many ways me too I don't think I'm coming from a vantage point of somebody who's gotten it all figured out you know looks like I'm painting in the dark right now on this uh, video by the way that's why it looks a little dim yeah um, what I'm saying is like you have a, an ability based on your intelligence and aesthetic uh, sense and your work ethic um, all those things together are going to combine to produce the best artists that you're capable of being and you will only know how great you can be if you put the time in and you can only put the time in if you're not making excuses and there are ma no shortage of excuses for not working but th the other thing uh, I guess I would really want to say is I've seen people go wrong is because um, and actually this draw mix guy he p talked about like how every piece you go after you should be th make thinking it's your masterpiece and then he seems to give contradictory advice that to that the way to get really good is to set yourself a strict time limit and to do things in a, a, a short amount of time as possible. That would seem contradictory but it's actually not because first of all the masterpiece thing is a mindset as is the time thing and really um, one of the things he stresses is just not doing any blending or anything just getting the color down and I have no problem doing that even on my figurative stuff because I'm not into blending I just get the get the color down now sometimes I go in a second pass like you'll see that that's what we're doing in this video now but even then I try and be very restrained I try not to my expression is always that I don't want to choke the life out of it um, but uh, he would he makes very good arguments for just leaving it at that first session then again he's working uh, wet into wet over maybe a several you know might be a session that took many many hours or even days if he has a still life set up with these very interesting light boxes and frankly I don't actually I love still lifes I really do when they're done when they're done well they're they're enchanting for me personally I just can't see spending a lot of time doing that I just don't see it selling for one I could be wrong. I'm probably wrong. I'm always, I'm not always wrong, but I'm often wrong about things like that because, uh, you know. Um, anyway, this is, so this is the, the philosophical lesson I wanted to impart to you today is uh, if you're a painter following this channel, um, you should have a daily practice. You should be getting a painting done every day. So you might not want to make them too big, especially if you're starting out. Um, Although even the bigger ones, you can get them done in a day. You just need to use a bigger brush. And you need to say, I'm going to get this done today. Get it done. Leave it alone. Don't be too harsh on yourself. And then let it, maybe if you need to, even turn it towards the wall if you really think that um, it's a horrible thing that you've done. And But a lot of times you'll, you'll evaluate. It's better to do something fresh and immediate that's honest than to keep picking and pecking away at something uh, and trying to pursue some sort of perfectionist ideal and I'm totally speaking from experience here I mean I've learned the hard way by doing so many overworked and overwrought paintings and uh, that goes for drawings and stuff too yeah but uh, that's all good you know the good thing about those is that they all added up to that um, experience um, of mastery right because the bad paintings help you do the good paintings never forget that so if they're bad so what that's how you're going to get to that that great one that's down the road this is going to be built in all the bad ones so that's just some of my advice for you today hopefully uh, it helps I'm trying to be helpful here so I'll be back real soon with another video you can rest assured in that God willing actually you know but uh, my intention is to be be back real soon with another video and uh, like this video. Go to my store. This will be for sale in my store. Um, and it'll be until I see you again real soon. Take good care. Stay out of trouble.